Hi, my name is Sebastian Matteau and today I would like to tell you about a study that we recently conducted in which we investigated the effect of a word's meaning, so the meaning of words that you read or meaning of words that you listen to, on the size of the eye's pupil. Now, and the pupil is the little black circle in the center of your eye. Now, let's start with a little bit of background. As you probably know, if you look at something that is very bright, such as the sun, or if you're in a bright environment, your pupil constricts, so it becomes very small compared to when you look at something that is dark or when you're in a dark environment, in which case your pupil dilates, so it becomes very big. And that's called the pupillary light response or the pupillary light reflex. Now, and what we did is we tested the pupil light response in combination with word comprehension. And we conducted a very simple experiment to do so. Uh, we asked participants to read or listen to individual words. And while the participants were doing that, we measured the size of their eyes pupil. And what we did is we manipulated the brightness that the words were associated with. So to give you an example, for example, a word like sun is associated with a very high brightness, right? Because the sun is very bright. Whereas a word such as night or shade is associated with darkness because the night and the shade are relatively dark. And what we found is that when participants read words that were associated with brightness, such as sun, their pupil was a little bit smaller compared to when they read words that were associated with darkness. And why, in other words, the pupil responds to the implied brightness of words in more or less the same way, but of course much more weakly, that the pupil also responds to the real brightness of things. And why does this happen? Well, we think it really tells us something about the way that our brain processes language. So a lot of theories of language, they hold that when you, when you understand a word, you automatically sort of simulate what that word looks like or feels like or tastes like and you also automatically simulate what you can do with that word or with that word's reference. For example, if you read a word like scream, you would automatically simulate a screaming sound. And if you read a word like hammer, for example, you would automatically simulate a hammering action. Now, in the case of our brightness and darkness related words, when you read a word like sun, you would automatically simulate a lot of brightness, right? Because the sun is very bright compared to when you read a word like night and you would mentally simulate darkness. And we believe that these mental simulations of brightness and darkness are what triggers these pupillary responses to the meaning of words. And what does that tell us about how language is processed? Well, there are a few different ways in which you can er interpret these results. For example, there is a theory that is called embodied language or embodied cognition. And according to embodied cognition, these mental simulations are really part of what it is to understand the word. So to give a concrete example, in order to understand the word sun, you would really need to mentally simulate uh, brightness. That mental simulation of brightness would be part of the word comprehension process, right? That's a very bold uh, theory, embodied uh, cognition. Now, another way to interpret these results is in terms of preparation. And then, then the idea is very simply, for example, say that you read the word lamb. Uh, that your body would automatically prepare for you to look or to at a lamp or to interact with the lamp. And because the lamp is bright, and when you look at the lamp, your pupil constricts, right? The pupil light response, that just hearing the word lamp would already result in preparation for looking at the lamp and would already cause your pupil to constrict in preparation, right? That's another way to, to interpret these results. And at the moment, we cannot really distinguish which of these, we cannot really tell which of these two uh, interpretations are correct. But what I think we can tell, based on our results, is that word comprehension, so the meaning of words, really has a very direct and immediate effect on our body, on how our body responds, and can even trigger these very subtle uh, pupillary responses, which are generally considered to be reflexive. So, thank you very much for your attention.